Hi everyone, it's Mr. Sinti, and today I'm glad you're joining me for this discussion on muscle tissue. <clears throat> muscle tissue is one of four types of tissues that are found in the human body, the others being epithelial, connective, and nervous tissue. Now, muscle tissue, there's so much going on with muscle tissue, but this is in the context this video is. Uh, under the, the guise or umbrella of histology. So this is kind of a brief coverage of the three different types of muscle tissue. So let me get into that. Um, one of the things about muscle tissue that, that's very cool, and perhaps we'll have another podcast on this exclusively, is how muscle cells contract. Because that's, you know, right out of the gate, that's one of the major characteristics of muscle tissue, that it's able to shorten. And, you know, what, what causes that? Well, nerve impulses do that. And so this is really neat. I think how there's many examples of this in the human body, but how nerves interact with other tissue. So nerves will cause muscles to contract. And so one of the things about muscle tissue is that you may already know this, but maybe haven't considered it, is some of the muscles in our body are under our control. In other words, like motion or just the fact that I'm talking or moving my hand like this, it's under voluntary control. So we can consciously contract some of the muscle tissue in our body, but yet other muscle tissue, for example, that line the digestive system that squeezes food through what's called the alimentary canal, that's not under our control, that's involuntary. And likewise, the heart which is an organ, so it's not exclusively muscle, but it's mostly muscle. It contracts, but not voluntarily. So we have some muscle that's under voluntary control and involuntary control. And the muscles that are associated with voluntary control that are under, under our conscious control are considered to be skeletal muscle. So we're gonna look at the, in this podcast, we're gonna look at the three types of muscle tissue. I hope you enjoy it. One of the things, let me introduce you to a muscle cell. So a muscle cell is really unusual and it, it's, it's pretty interesting. First off, what I want to say about a muscle cell, and this used to bug me a little bit as a beginning student to physiology, but it doesn't as much now, I wonder. So a muscle cell is called a muscle fiber. And I know that that can be considered confusing because um, normally when you, when you think of fibers, you think of like maybe strings of protein. But a muscle cell is, is considered to be a muscle fiber. And I can now see where they're coming from this because if you can see, here's the cell membrane right here. And one thing you'll notice about a muscle cell is that it's extremely elongated. And so it's sort of like, if I can use this analogy, like a big bag of spaghetti. And so the clear plastic of the, of the spaghetti is the, is the cell membrane. And then inside all of those thin sheets of pasta are what we're going to call myofibrils. And so there's, they're bundles of long strings of protein. And so the muscle cell is so dominated by long sheets of protein that it's almost difficult to see anything but that. However, of course, there's a nucleus. Of course, there's ribosomes. Of course, there's endoplasmic reticulum. Of course, there's mitochondria, if I already said that. There's lots of organelles that are inside, but it's very much dominated by these, like, cables, if you will, of protein. And, and you may already know that coming into this conversation, that when you eat meat, which is muscle, uh, it's a great source of protein. And so there's a, a potpourri of different proteins found in muscle fibers or in muscle cells. But the two primary proteins that are in muscle cells are called actin and myosin. And those two proteins, along with other regulatory proteins, allow the proteins to slide across from one, across from one another, and therefore the whole muscle cell contracts or shortens, and therefore it's able to do work and, and, and cause movement. So these, pro these contractile proteins, which I'll get into in a different video, are made up of actin and myosin. So pretty incredible. Now, uh, it requires 
uh, a pretty good microscope to be able to see some of these thick filaments, which are myosin, and the thin filaments, which are actin. But interestingly enough, from the light microscope, can you see the side perspective here? Do you see how there's like dark, light, dark, light, dark, light? We'll get into that a little bit later, but it's almost as if there's lines here or striations. And so one of the characteristics of skeletal muscle is that it's highly striated. And so that has to do with sort of the, the gaps between the actin and myosin when you look from the side. And so muscle cell, uh, is pretty interesting because it contains all those myofibrils. And so let's talk about muscle in general. What does it do? Well, if it's contracting, if these muscle, if these proteins are moving, moving implies energy. So the energy is, you know, if you define it, the ability to do work. And so you may, again, already know that muscle consumes a lot of the energy of the body. And it's like, well, what other, what other places in the body would, would consume energy? surprisingly the brain maybe not so much surprisingly but the brain consumes a tremendous amount of energy and also the kidneys use a lot of energy but muscle in order to contract i i don't want to just throw out something and then not get into the detail of it but the the body uses a chemical called adenosine triphosphate and so what it does is it takes food and the food that you eat like for example, if I'm having a muffin or if I'm having uh, some French toast or something for breakfast, you're like, wow, there's a lot of energy in that carbohydrate. Well, the food per se, the muffin doesn't, doesn't make a muscle contract. The glucose doesn't make muscle contract, but in the muscle fiber, in the muscle cell, we have a internal organelle called the mighty mitochondria, or just mitochondria, and food organic molecules, carbon containing molecules, are turned into adenosine triphosphate. We'll talk about this in muscle contraction. And it's the ATP that interacts with the proteins inside the muscle cells and causes them to move. And so that uses a lot of energy. This is sort of the currency. And this, it, loses, it uses a lot of food consumption. And so pretty neat. Uh, another thing that I want to mention is in order for us to move, the muscle has to be connected to the bone. And if you recall this, if you watch the connective tissue, video. The way muscles connect with bones are with tendons. Tendons allow that connection. You can see here this muscle is connected to the patella with this tendon right there. So skeletal muscle is called skeletal muscle because it is attached to the skeleton. I know that sounds obvious, but just saying. So skeletal muscle is one of three kinds of muscle tissue. And so skeletal muscle is striated, that's one of the characteristics, because it's sort of dark light, dark light, dark light. Um, it has a nucleus, of course, and what's a little bit unusual is that muscle fibers, muscle cells, contain more than one nucleus. So they contain many nuclei, okay? And there's sheets of protein inside called myofibrils, principally actin and myosin. So we can voluntarily cause the, these muscles to contract. And so where is skeletal muscle? It's uh, everywhere throughout the body and it's connected to the skeletal system. Now smooth muscle, we we'll jump over here, down here, smooth muscle lacks that striation. And so you, it looks like this. And it lines our internal organs, like for example, the, inner, in, the inside of the stomach uh, it's made up of this smooth muscle, which causes the, the stomach to be able to contract. The intestines are made up of this smooth muscle. And so these wave-like contractions that are not under our control, they're considered to be involuntary. So smooth muscle is involuntary muscle. And those wave-like contractions called peristalsis help to move food through the digestive system. And then, well, I can also say that smooth, smooth muscles also found and blood vessels. And so especially large arteries that are very thick have smooth muscle. When we get into the cardiovascular system, we'll talk more about how these smooth muscles are very useful in terms of um, allowing some blood to flow in one direction and, and other blood to flow in different directions or to cut off blood. Like for example, if our face becomes very pale, smooth muscles involved in this. And then the third type of muscle is called cardiac muscle, and this is found exclusively in the heart. 
cardiac muscle. It also has some striations as well. And so it might be under the microscope confused with skeletal muscle, but an expert eye will be able to tell the difference. Only one nucleus per cell in skeletal muscle. And it's also involuntary, although all of it is controlled by the nervous system. So we have cardiac muscle cell found in the heart. We have skeletal muscle found in muscles that are connected to the skeletal system. And then we have smooth muscle cells that are found in arteries and veins and digestive system. So a great picture of skeletal muscle under the light microscope. And so first off, you can see here's the nucleus, here's the nucleus, here's one cell, here's another cell, here's another cell. So the cells are really big. They're really long, I should say, not just big, they're elongated. And all of these lines are the striations uh, of the myofibrils, which are this pro proteins of actin and myosin. And so they're very long and they're cylindrical and they're striated and they have m many nuclei and they can, con they can contract under voluntary control from the skeletal, from the nervous system. And so another picture of skeletal muscle, this is a drawing of it. And this is an actual light microscope micrograph of skeletal muscle right there. And it's striated and it helps us to move and it's voluntarily controlled. Here's a close up of that. You can see the striations. It's one of the, one of the easier types of tissue to identify. And then smooth muscle, you might be wondering like, well, what is this picture? This is a, a blood vessel. It happens to be an artery. And so an artery is a tube that allows blood to travel in away from the heart. Inside here, in the inner space, the inside of the tube is, you could either call it the lumen inside the, the blood vessel, or it could be considered the matrix. This is where the blood flows. These are red blood cells. Here's the plasma. And so this first layer right here, just a little review from another video, this very first layer of tissue, which very thin is simple squamous that lines the inside because remember the very first tissue layer uh, in contact with the free space is epithelial but then this tissue right here is the smooth muscle and so that's capable of contracting and it also provides a little bit of elasticity to allow the, the blood vessel to expand when it's under a great amount of pressure created by the heart contracting. So where would you find smooth muscle? You can find it in arteries, blood vessels. You can find it again through the digestive system. There's some smooth muscle in the urinary bladder and other internal organs as well. And so the key is that it's involuntary. And so, but it's rather important, even though we don't control it. It's almost a good thing. Think about it, if we had to keep voluntary control over smooth muscle, I think that would occupy a lot of our attention. So this is a picture of what smooth muscle looks like under the microscope. So notice, you're like, what am I looking at? One nucleus per cell. Uh, notice that there's no striations in smooth muscle. And so this is again, a drawing of smooth muscle. And this is what it looks like with a little bit of a darker purple stain. And the nucleus is here in blue. Okay. And then finally, the last tissue is cardiac muscle. Again, striations, one nucleus per cell, only in the heart. So this tissue is only in the heart, and there's only one heart, one heart or core unum. Okay. And so pretty important. Uh, cardiac muscle, you know, the cool thing about cardiac muscle is that it beats very early on uh, during embryonic development. And so I find that that's kind of interesting that the heart beats very early on in your, in your life. And so I hope you enjoyed, I think, a brief video on the three different types of muscle tissue. And uh, three different types of muscle tissue, but muscle tissue is one of four overall tissues, like epithelial, muscle, connective, and nerve. So I hope that was enjoyable, and I hope it was beneficial. And thanks for watching.